Hi folks, uh, let me first uh, apologize for not being there today. Um, I know how important today is. Um, it's not just another government announcement. This is the culmination of many years, at least a half a dozen years for Joel Bowen and I, uh, but many years and many hours, much energy uh, on the parts of those that are gathered here today. I have a couple of prepared notes here if I could, uh, if I could share. Um, I, I recall back um, uh, Rory McAlpine coming to my office probably seven years ago now, uh, first speaking about it, but uh, uh, many groups after that. Uh, we met with Canadian Meat Council, companies like High Life and, and Maple Leaf, and of course later on the unions uh, like UFCW. Uh, what we realized at that time was that they were all saying the same thing, the temporary foreign workers who come to this country and work hard filling permanent jobs should have a fair and reasonable chance to become a Canadian, regardless of the job they are filling. This pilot is a result of the collaboration between government, employers and unions, specifically the Canadian Meat Council and its members like Maple Leaf and High Life, and unions like the United Food and Commercial Workers who represent thousands of workers in the meat sector including many who will benefit from the pathways of permanent residency that this pilot creates. It's also because of the support from other agri-food sectors, like mushrooms, who have been tireless in their advocacy. Uh, the feedlot operators, um, who, who have been strong on this issue as well. All of whom I've met with over the years and who've advocated for credible pathways to permanent residency for their workers who they do not uh, want to employ on any type of temporary basis, more so permanently. It was also a collaboration with the Canadian Agriculture HR Council, who has done great work in gathering essential information necessary to help build that better understanding of the permanent labor needs within this industry. Up to their involvement, it was pretty much anecdotal information that we were working off, so uh, their contribution has been uh, key. Many industries and regions of the country are facing labor shortages with a 40-year record low unemployment rate. It's expected to get harder to find Canadian workers, especially in this sector. Uh, there's no one silver bullet that's going to solve labor shortages. And uh, Joelle and I have said many times, you know, what we hope to do is, number one, uh, find a Canadian who's able to do the job. If we can't find one, then let's train one. And if we can't train one, then we want to create a new Canadian. Today's announcement is about making new Canadians to help support employers and their Canadian workers overcome their labor challenges for the benefit of all. I visited meat processing plants in Alberta and Manitoba and witnessed the success firsthand of immigration for the agri-food employers, their workers, and the communities they are in. Recently I was at uh, Cargill and we were leaving the plant during a shift change. And to see the many faces and uh, of the uh, the night shift coming in, uh, knowing that they came from around the world, they were coming into more than just their shift, coming into more than just a job. They were coming into a new opportunity for themselves, for their families, and for a better future. And today's announce announcement helps to build on that success. To complement the pilot. Uh, Employment and Social Development Canada is introducing changes to the Temporary Foreign Worker Program that will benefit meat processors who are supporting temporary foreign workers in transitioning to permanent residency. One of the measures will be the potential for meat processors to access a two-year labor market impact assessment, including processors who are using the agri-food immigration pilot or existing pathways to permanent residence for temporary foreign workers in the same occupations and industries that are eligible for the pilot. To be eligible, meat processors will require to outline their plans to support those temporary foreign workers in obtaining permanent residency. Furthermore, unionized meat processors will require a letter of support from their union they, because we know the unions will make sure that Canadians are getting first crack at these jobs. Non-unionized meat processors will have to meet additional requirements to ensure labor market and migrant workers are protected with the issuance of a two-year LMIA. These requirements will be developed through a tripartite working uh, relationship 
uh, that is being formed immediately. And I, I know that uh, uh, both Derek from the UFCW, uh, Marie France from the, from the council uh, have put time in and uh, that work is, is moving uh, forward. Before I conclude, I want to recognize the work of both uh, my minister, Patty Haidu, and Minister Hassan. Uh, Patty, we, we get out of the gate a, a little late on this issue. The, the stakeholders would understand uh, uh, that uh, the, the, the first bit to try to find a resolution on this issue um, was uh, a, a bit difficult early on. Patty came in. And I can't say enough about uh, the confidence that she placed in Joelle and I in, uh, in, in working with the stakeholders to, uh, to find a resolution. Uh, she's been a, a, a tremendous supporter, and I want to thank her and her staff for, um, for uh, helping pull this thing through. Uh, Dan McKenzie, especially, uh, uh, working with Joelle to, to make sure that the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Uh, Minister Hussain, uh, you've been a champion. I know that uh, this this has been this is such a small portion of the workforce. It's such a small part of what it is you do, and some of the challenges that uh, uh, you faced in this portfolio. But nonetheless, uh, you've given it the time and uh, and energy, and you've brought the same passion to this issue as you have to. Um, you, you, to uh, uh, all other aspects of your portfolio, uh, which you've done a tremendous job on. So I want to uh, thank you personally for uh, giving us the time to, to, to put on this issue so that we can come to uh, the resolution that we've, uh, we've, we've got today. And I want to single out as well Kyle Nicholson, uh, who has got the bumps and bruises uh, over the over the uh, last while in, in uh, trying to pull this thing over the fence. Um, you, you know, it, it was a, a tough one to get done, but uh, Kyle hung in there, and uh, I, I want to recognize uh, his, uh, his, his contribution as well. Uh, in conclusion, I hope everyone today feels proud about their contribution. This is a whole bunch of people coming together uh, to make this uh, uh, pilot project a reality. The success is yours. It's a concrete example of our government's continued commitment to working in partnership with all stakeholders, including business, unions, migrant workers, to address labor shortages in a way that's in everybody's best interest. Again, sorry for not being able to attend today, but folks, this is a, a, a great day. This is a lot of work on the part of so many people, and uh, I just want to um, uh, thank you for your efforts. Thank you for your patience. But uh, congratulate you as well on, uh, on a good piece of work.